Hello, this is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 8. In this exercise, we're going to apply some of the things that we've worked with in regards to profile styles and profile view styles, and apply those to the other profiles and profile views in the drawing. And we've got six tasks that we need to complete, and the first one is to change the profile view style of Madison Lane and Logan Court to match that of Jordan Court. So before we do anything, let's find out what the profile view style of Jordan Court is. One way I can do that, click on the profile view, go to profile view properties, and on the information tab it tells me that this is the major and minor grids 10V profile view style. So I'll just use that same style click on the Madison Lane profile view, profile view style, major and minor grids 10V. And now it looks like Jordan Court. But another thing that we can do I want to point out is that we can use the match properties command. And what's nice about the match properties command, one of several things, is that I don't need to know what the style is of the original object. I can simply go to Match Properties, I can select the Profile View for Jordan Court, and then select the Profile View for Logan Court, and it magically transfers that style from one Profile View to the other. So there you can see two ways of, of handling the Profile View style, and there's even a third way. I can go to the Properties window and change the assignment of the Profile View style there as well. So that takes care of the first task. For the second task, we are asked to apply the same profile view bands to Madison Lane that have been applied to Jordan Court and Logan Court. So if we look at Jordan Court, we can see the bands down here along the bottom, also on Logan Court, and we want this profile view for Madison Lane to have the same bands. Now this one's a little trickier. We can't use match properties here. Um, and it's not just a matter of a single style. If we take a look at the profile view properties of Jordan Court and on the bands tab, we notice that there is a, a single band added. Now, there could be multiple bands. There could be several bands here that all make up uh, a band set. And if there were multiple bands present, we would have to add those multiple bands to the other profile view as well. But this is actually pretty simple. We can see that there's one band added, it's a profile data band, and it's called Elevations and Stations. So we can go into the Madison Lane profile view, wrong command, sorry, and we can do the same thing, profile data, elevations and stations, and we can click add. It's going to ask us what types of geometry we want to include, we'll just hit OK and accept everything. Click OK again and the band is applied. Now one thing that I didn't really even look at or address was the gap and some other settings that applied to that band. Luckily it looks pretty good, it's a pretty close match so the defaults were okay for that case. But what if I didn't have the right gap or the right increments or weeding or any of these factors here? Well that's where a band set comes in handy. If I look back on this profile view once again, not only do I need to know the type of band or bands and the style of each one, but all of these values as well are all part of the band configuration. And if you have multiple bands, then you've got multiple pieces of information that you need to remember for all of those. So to make life easy on yourself, you can create a band set, and we did this earlier in the chapter. So to make sure I get this right, I'm going to click Save as Band Set, and I'll just call this My Band Set to make it easy. And it's going to store all the information in this part of the dialog. And then I can go to another profile view, and I can import that band set into that profile view, and I'll know that I'm getting all of the right settings, including the gap and weeding and all of those other things that go into the band. So now I'm certain that I have a perfect match from this profile view to this one. So there's some information about how to 
apply bands or band sets across different profile views and that takes care of task number two. For task number three we are asked to apply the same profile label set to the Madison Lane finish ground center line that has been applied to the Jordan Court and Logan Court finish ground center line. So what we're talking about there are the black curve and grade labels that we see and also the grade breaks as well. So we need to apply the same set of labels to Madison Lane which currently has no labels. So uh, this is a very similar solution as the band set because if you look at a label set it consists of multiple labels and each label has its own settings as far as start station, start station end station, weeding on, on all of those different things. It's a lot of information to remember and try to transfer from one profile to the other. So that's why a label set comes in really handy. So to make sure I get it right, I'm going to take this information and save it as a label set and I'll call it my label set. Now if I were working in my company template, I would already know um, based on my company standards what the right label set is based on the available choices. But um, to kind of drive the point home here, the importance of the label set and how it gathers up all this information and puts it in a nice neat package for you, we're going to do it this way. So I'll click OK and, and nothing happens to this profile because I haven't changed anything. I've just gone out and grabbed information from it. And now I can click on the Madison Lane FGCL profile and I can go to profile properties and I can't, I'm sorry, I need to not profile properties, I need to edit profile labels and instead of trying to figure all this out and adding all of these individual labels I can just say import label set and I'll go out and get the one called my label set it's going to bring in all of the labels with the right settings and when I click OK it has the same label configuration as Jordan Court. And the only thing I may need to do is some adjustment of the label position. As you can see I've got some line passing through the label here so I'll just pull that up a bit to make it a little more clear. Everything else looks pretty good. And that satisfies the requirement for task number three. For task number four we're going to project the test boring blocks located along the Madison Lane alignment to the profile view for Madison Lane and we're going to use the existing ground center line as the basis for the elevations of those projections. So what I'll do is I'll click on the profile view to get started and using the contextual nature of the ribbon tab it takes me right to the project objects to profile view command. So I'll click that. I'll go to the Madison Lane alignment and here I can see the test boring objects. So I'll click all of those, press enter once I've selected all of them, styles, notice that I'm going to use uh, test bore and if I want to set them all at once I can use the line at the top. Elevation is going to be my either my existing ground surface, that'll work, but if we look at the instructions of the task it says to use the Madison Lane existing ground center line. Now they should be the same, but just to go with what the uh, the step has told us, I'm going to use Madison Lane EGCL. Label style looks good, it's called bore. Just look at some of the other choices there and that looks like the best choice. I'll click OK and then when I go to the Madison Lane profile view I should see those test bores projected and labeled. Okay, so that worked perfectly. And that takes care of task number four. Task number five is also an object projection, but a different type of object projection. For this one, we're going to project the survey figure representing the north edge of the stream to the Jordan Court profile view. So we're going to a different profile view this time. And the north edge of the stream is actually this survey figure right here. So maybe for flood study purposes or uh, for that sort of thing we want to analyze the water level as it is in relation to the center line of the road. So once again I'll click the profile view which brings up my contextual ribbon tab. There I see project objects to profile view. I'll launch that command. 
I'll select my survey figure and hit enter. Style, I'm going to see what my options are here. I think we'll just go with basic. Elevation options, I want to use the, the elevations on the object that were actually provided by my survey crew, let's say, who went out and located not just the horizontal location of the edge of the water, but also the vertical, the elevation of it as well. So I'll click OK. And if we pan over to the Jordan Court profile view, here we can see the water level of the stream as it relates to the center line of the road. And that could tell a very important story to uh, a hydraulic engineer or a hydrologic engineer studying the storm events of the road. They may know how far the water level is going to raise in the event of a certain storm. Whatever the case may be, uh, it's an important visual to see the water level obviously below the center line of the road because that's where we want to keep it. So that takes care of task number five. And for the final task, we want to take that analysis of the stream water level a little bit further and actually label the depth from the lowest point in the road to the stream elevation directly below it. So to see what we're talking about there, I'm going to zoom in a little closer. And we can see that there's a low point for this curve at station 16 plus 7, 7.02. And part of that label is to also place a tick mark at that low point. So this is the low point of the curve. And what I want to do is provide a depth label from there down to the water label, water level. So I'll go to the annotate tab and launch the add labels command. And I'll pick profile view as the type or the feature I want to label. Label type will be depth. And I'm going to go ahead and use the depth label style. Notice for just about every one of these operations, I'm at least looking at my choice of label styles and making my best guess at what the right label style or the right style is going to be. And I think that's a great way to use Civil 3D. Every time you create an object or a label, take a look at the styles that you have and try to do your best at picking the best choice. So I'll click Add and I'll pick my profile view. And then for the first point, I'm going to try to snap right to the end point of that tick mark. And then I'll turn ortho on using the F8 key. Unfortunately, this doesn't respond to ortho, so I'm going to have to kind of eyeball it and make it as vertical as possible and pick a point right on the water level. I'll zoom out a little bit. We can see that that's a distance of 5.82 feet. So somewhere out there, that's going to tell somebody that the water level of the stream, at least at the time that it was surveyed, is 5.82 feet below the proposed elevation of my road. Now what the significance of that number is is going to depend on the engineer that's analyzing the, uh, the stormwater uh, performance of the site. That takes care of task number six and that also completes the additional exercise for chapter eight.